Legislature, 429 Mississippi Street. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to do a meet and greet um, at 800 Farris Street from 6 to 8. The uh, protest 2 to 5. Okay. So 2 to 5. Okay. Be 6 to 8 at 800 Farris. Make sure to talk about it on, on the radio. Seven Forty Eight Podcast. Oh, yeah. We back once yes. again on the Urban City Podcasting Network. Gerald right. Jabot, Bottle Papa, DJ Fingerprints. Yeah, peace, part peace. two, part two, part two. We got a special guest in the building once again. We love to have him in the state of Mississippi, mm. in the city of Jackson, talking right. about Umar Johnson. He's in the building. Peace yeah. and Pan Africanism family. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah, man. How you been since you last? Doing well. Doing good, well. Good. Yes, good, yes, good. 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 Yeah, man. Uh. You here? What brought you back uh, this time again? Um, well, the good brother Jeremiah, who you just met, he's the one who brought me here the last time for the march and rally outside the state capitol. Yeah. So they decided they wanted to do a part two with it. So we back. Okay. So that's okay. going to be the day, uh, two o'clock to five o'clock. We went. We want all of Black Mississippi to come on out, brothers and sisters in surrounding states, because what affect one African affects all African people. And if the white power structure of Mississippi is successful in moving forward and expanding this capital city district that they have, as well as all of the various other policy initiatives coming from the racist Mississippi state legislator to strip Mayor Chukwe Lumumba of his municipal authority and the voters of Jackson of their power to choose their duly elected officials, if they can do it in Jackson, they can do it anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So we have to stand here to make sure that this problem doesn't go over into other states. Because one thing we know about racism in America is they run a lot of uh, pilots, a lot of Ooh, test pilots yeah. to see if it can be successful in one place and then they take it to other places. We're uh, free in the land, free in the water once again, part two. Yes, right. sir. Two uh, to five. Two to five. Two to five. Uh, 429 Mississippi Street. We will be outdoors. Yep. Uh, there will be some speakers. Of course, myself will be included in that. Then there'll be a march and then later on in the evening at six to eight, we'll be at the African Art Gallery 800 Farris Street. Uh, F-A-R-I-S-H mm -hmm. 800 Farris Street and... Uh, one of the greatest um, black cultural shops I've been to, by the way, I have to say that okay. about the African Art Gallery. It's also a yeah. bookstore. Yes, uh, a yes, lot of indeed. great books in there. Yeah. A lot yes. of great. I mean, I've I got a big head, so <laughs> it's hard for me to find a lot of the fit a lot of the African yeah. kufis. That's right. And when I was here last time, I was able to buy about five or six of oh, them. Wow. Right. And I mm. normally can't do that with this big head. I normally get <laughs> one. So I got a lot of love for the African Art Gallery. Mm. So normally when we go there, we just kind of sit around politic. Mm. Talk about different issues and That's things uh, involving right, good, the liberation good. struggle. Good stuff. And I wanted to let the people know that next weekend I'll be in Memphis. Yeah. Uh, there's a big celebration. It's the 55th year since Dr. King was assassinated. And so on Sunday, excuse me, Monday night, April the 3rd, which is the exact day that Dr. King delivered his I've been to the mountaintop speech. So I'll Powerful be uh, keynoting um, the remembrance of that and the relevance of that. That will be at the Robert L. Church Park. Gotcha. Robert Church Park in Memphis, 4 o'clock, Monday the 3rd. But the night before, on Sunday, okay, on Sunday, April the 2nd, mm -hmm. there will be a Black Father's Day, excuse me, a Black Father's March, March. gala. Right. Gotcha. That's so, so Sunday, 6 o'clock, and then Monday, 4 o'clock. And if anybody needs the flyer for that or for today, feel free to text my phone and I'll shoot mm. you the flyer. Just tell me what you're looking for. 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858. Okay, good stuff, man. So you, you, you busy. You busy in the communities, in the black communities across states. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. That's right. That's right. Uh, I want to get into uh, the topic you talked about yesterday on YouTube, the multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. ah. All right. Mm. <laughs> you gave it direct. Uh, at the 19th minute mark, 
I know this is where you said where uh, people, black people would feel co- uncomfortable supposedly in, in a room full of different races of people. Yes. Okay. Could you reiterate that? Uh, because of the low racial self-esteem that we have as a group and because of the psychological hopelessness that we suffer from as a people and because of the psychological homelessness that also affects us as a community. Whenever we get around non-black people, especially white, but it's true for all groups, we tend to want to play the court jester. Mm -hmm. Our anxiety and uncomfortability leads us to go out of our way to make everyone else comfortable so they will accept us. So we will say insulting things about ourselves, insulting things Mm -hmm. about the black community, We'll feed into stereotypes. We'll start acting like a fool or a clown to make all of them comfortable. It's our anxiety, our Mm. racial anxiety, Mm. being amongst a group of people who you know don't value you and don't want you there. It often triggers subconsciously in the mind of a Negro that plantation slave mentality Mm -hmm. and that plantation slave behavior that says we have to keep the master comfortable at all costs. But in that in that statement, Mm -hmm. you're saying so you don't think that the other races of people when they're around the other races of people think the same thing or tend to do the same type of or act this have the same type of behavior to some extent yes i've seen it but not to the extent we do it right not to the extent we do it because when we walk into a room one thing is absolutely clear nobody else in a room really desires us to be there most of us know we are tokens Mm. we we know that when we walk in there you're only here so we don't look like the races that we are you are Mm -hmm. a token Mm. And every other group in America is united against our best interests. So even though you might be in a room with one white person, one Asian, one Arab, one Latino, one East Indian, one Native American, one European Jew, they are all collectively opposed to black people. Mm. So multiculturalism is a sham and a farce because nobody's interested in inclusion yeah. for black people. Okay. If they were interested in inclusion for black people, you wouldn't see as many homeless. You wouldn't see as any incarcerated. You wouldn't see as many unemployed. Someone ha- would have to show me the inclusion mm. for black people. Even when you look at affirmative action, which was supposed to be the inclusionary policy, yeah. it benefited homosexuals, uh, physically white handicapped and white women more than it benefited black people. Okay. Although on paper, the civil rights bill, the affirmative action policies claim to be inclusionary programs, they never sought to include black mm. people, only to give you the illusion mm. of inclusion. Okay. So how about when they use the term people of color? When they People of color yeah, you know. is a, distraction, a distractionary term. So what people of color says is, we don't want to empower blacks. Okay. Mm-hmm. But we can't come out and say that. We have to look like we care. So what we're going to do is we're going to lump all non-white people in this generic term of people of color. Right. This way, mm-hmm. it looks like we're talking about black people. Right. We're serving black people. Right. But we're really talking about all non-whites who are other than black. That's right. So, for example, let's say Jackson, Mississippi. Hypothetically, you look at the city and you say, or, or, or the state. Let's look at the state of Mississippi. What percentage of state contracts went to black people? Mm. The governor may say, we gave 20% of our contracts to minorities Mm -hmm. or people of color. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask you how many contracts you gave to minorities. And I didn't ask you how many contracts you gave to people of color. I asked you how many contracts you gave Mm -hmm. to black people. Because guess what? If we allow ourselves to be clumped in with all non-whites as people of color, Mm -hmm. they can give 20% of the contracts to people of color and and not a single black get one. You see that? Exactly. So the definitions that we use that allow us to be multiculturalized in with Mm -hmm. other anti-black non-white people Mm -hmm. will ultimately be used to disenfranchise us. But psychologically, they get away with it because we as a race are not comfortable standing alone. Mm. That's why whenever we have a march or protest, if you notice, most of the time when we speak, we're including other groups in who have nothing to do with it. Right. Take the George Floyd protest. Mm-hmm. Everybody who spoke spoke of the issues of Latinos, mm-hmm. spoke of the issues of homosexuals, mm-hmm. spoke of the issues of brown and yellow and, and poor white. never got back to black. Never came back to black. So <laughs> how can you make the government prioritize your issues as black people? When you yourself don't. won't even prioritize your issues right. as black people. Now, 
multicultural to me is a spectrum. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you said that you focused on one situation. Mm-hmm. So when you say multiculturalism is, is not the way for black people. What if, you know, you love who you love. You, you know, you always that ain't got say, nothing to do with it. Well, We're okay, talking about but, political but, economic but, but empowerment. You, okay. Okay. But it's still, a, it's still on that spectrum. Okay. You see what I'm saying? But if we're going to be multicultural, then let's multiculturalize the money. Let's multiculturalize the banks. Yeah. Let's multiculturalize mm-hmm. the land. Okay. Let's multiculturalize the assets. Let's multiculturalize the political power. When we have conversations about multiculturalism, it tends to be limited to social integration. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can we go and sit at the park together? Mm-hmm. Can I go sleep with a snow bunny? Mm-hmm. You understand? Can my child get enrolled at a white private school? That's right. We're not talking about that. You understand me? Charitable inclusion. We're talking about meaningful economic and political empowerment for blacks. If America is as multicultural as she claims to be, and we are 12 to 17 percent of the population, why don't we own 12 to 17 percent of the wealth? Yeah. You understand me? I got you. For me, multiculturalism is about the politics and the economics. I can care less about the social. Okay. I have no problem with white people who don't want to live with black people. No problem at all. Okay. I'm dealing with assets, resources, privileges. Right. Now, here's a, uh, uh, with that question, whose job is it to let us as black people know mm-hmm. where the resources are? Because a lot of times the information is right there where we are mm-hmm. and we won't even read it. See what That's true. But a lot of times yeah. the information is not right there where we are. Let me give you an example. I work in the schools. I'm a school psychologist. Right? right. All right. Most black parents don't know their rights. They don't know that they have a right to refuse the special ed eval. They don't know they have a right to refuse the ADHD eval. They don't know that the school does not have the right to make them go put their child on drugs. They don't know if they don't agree with the evaluation. They got a right to a second opinion. They don't know. Now, does the school give them a handout when you sign a permission form? There's something called a notice of rights. It's a thick packet. You can read it straight through. But if you're not in the field of special education or school psychology, you don't know what the hell they're talking about. But then when your child ends up spending 12 years in special ed, the system would turn around and say, if you would have read your rights, you would have saw that if you didn't agree with the diagnosis, you could have got a second opinion. But the way in which y'all explain these rights are not necessarily understandable by lay persons. Mm -hmm. The power structure works the same way. They'll say it's on paper. It's right there for y'all to see it. But where they put it and how they explain it is done in such a way to still keep you ignorant about what's going on. So we got to be careful about saying the information is there. Mm -hmm. The information is not presented for black people the way it's presented for white people. Okay. Facts. Um, Now, going back to multiculturalism, how do you feel about the people who have black skin but don't associate with being black? Like, say, uh, somebody from Jamaica or somewhere that say, I'm not black, I'm Jamaican. Okay, great question. Well, first of all, you got a lot of uh, American Africans who don't associate with being black. Mm-hmm. So let's be clear about that. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, yeah, right. straight up a descendant of enslaved Africans, you mm-hmm. understand, yeah. and don't associate with being black. Well, what is you it? know what I mean? You look at all the black celebrities who marry white girls, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, they don't so so this whole notion of not association with black people is not limited to African immigrants mm-hmm. right. as some people would posit the narrative. Mm-hmm. We have just as many American Africans who are as guilty of the same thing. For me, coming from a pan Africanist perspective, it is a problem within the race. It is not a problem of any particular branch Mm -hmm. of the African family. In other words, I see the same thing in the Caribbean Mm -hmm. where you have African people who don't want to be bothered with African people. I see it in the UK. (laughs) We have African people who don't want to be bothered with African people. I see it in Africa. I see it in South America. That is a problem of the race. Why do you think that is? Self-hatred. Nobody wants to be associated with anything they consider to be an object of ridicule. Mm. Black people will always be scorned by everybody, even our own people, until we make ourselves an object of respect. And we cannot make ourselves an object of respect by begging white people to solve our problems. Mm -hmm. White people are never going to solve black people's problems, but they will keep you believing that they will, i.e. the Democratic Party, Mm -hmm. i.e. the President of the United States, i.e. the Congressional Black Caucus. Mm -hmm. Hope is a very, very powerful weapon against oppressed people. Because oppressed people tend to rely on external 
intervention Mm -hmm. more than other folks. And they tend to also be extremely religiously immature. So they're looking for God to help them before they help themselves. They're looking for the government to help them before they help themselves. So if I want to control black people, all I have to do is make them think Help is coming. coming. Never deliver the hope. And every election, you're promised that if you just hang in there with us, four more years, things will get better. Well, guess what? Average black person life expectancy is probably around the mid 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. You divide that by four years of every president, whether you live through maybe 25 presidential presidential elections. So all they have to do is feed you false hope for 25 presidential elections. And the next thing you know, you in the grave. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the strategies of white supremacy to keep black people from solving their own problems Mm -hmm. is by making you think hope. Change is coming right. if you just keep hope alive. As Jesse said, <laughs> keep hope <laughs> alive. Change and speaking of Jesse, yeah. speaking of Jesse yeah. Jackson's 1984, 1988 presidential campaigns, in retrospect, when I studied Jesse Jackson's, mm-hmm. who was the first quote unquote serious black candidate for presidency of the United States, right? Now that I look at it in hindsight, I believe the Democratic Party put Jesse Jackson up to running for president. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. And the reason why yeah, is yeah, because yeah. the black vote was waning and they needed someone who could re-energize the black base. Mm. So what we're going to do is put Jesse out there. Mm-hmm. We know he can't win. He know he can't win, mm-hmm. but he will energize the black vote yeah. and he will bring them back to the Democratic Party. Right. And after he loses the caucus and the major Democratic candidate is anointed all those black people who put their hope in Jesse they will simply transfer to transfer the hope to the new white so savior. So how do of the we come back that? I asked this question last time you was here. Like, how do we galvanize blacks to get on one accord to you know think it's the same way to get off the plantation from being democratic or, or anything that you know of that nature? Like, what are some of the things we can do to galvanize the people as a whole to give them, I don't know, incentive or Maybe even hope at the same time. Here's know? the big problem with that. And that's a very good question you ask in my brother. You got a couple issues. Number one, black people approach all of our problems from the perspective of religion. Right. We do not approach our problems from the perspective of political analysis. We are not deep critical thinkers. Right. Our decisions are made on emotions. We shop based on emotion. Mm-hmm. We marry based on emotion. Mm-hmm. We vote based on emotion. We kill each other based on emotion. So what you're saying mm-hmm. is let's take a logical, critical, intellectual analysis of what's going on with black people. Right. Deep thought and analysis is what we need. Black people don't solve their problems like that. We have been brainwashed by black religion to use our imaginations and our emotions. And that's exactly what the power structure uses to keep us hooked into their agenda. That's the problem. Black people don't want to think. We want to feel good. And anything that makes us feel good will get our loyalty. So what we have to do is we have to separate out black people who are ready to think from black people who are only interested in feeling now, how do you how do you move all of that around? I think it's the what generation. If, you know, you the think younger it's generation, generation. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I don't yeah. think the, the younger generation is attached to religion such as our parents mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, and, and you know. Yeah. They're not. But they are more attached to multiculturalism okay. than the parents okay. were. Okay. So okay. whereas okay. the weakness of the elderly generations is their religious situation. The weakness of the youth is their multiculturalism. Okay. So if we look at the 1960s and compare that to the black yeah. college campus today, yeah. if you went to the college campus in the 1960s, black or white, Stokely, Panthers, yeah. Yeah. SNCC, right. Court, right? Mm-hmm. Active. It was all about black issues. Mm-hmm. Right. Go to a college campus today, we fighting LGBT, yep. mm-hmm. we fighting the environment, right. we're fighting for multiculturalism, we're fighting to get more blacks in the Republican Party. Anything except what matters to us, our young people in the college campuses are involved in that. It is a complete 360 degrees, 365 degrees from where we were. Right. Is it 360, 365 degrees? 365. 360. No, 360. 360. 360. <laughs> it's a complete 360 degree turn yeah. from where we was back in That's the 1960s. Right. Right. They have well, multiculturalized our young people. And our young people are also more materialistic. That's yeah, another one. Oh, yeah. So the strengths they, of the elders are the weaknesses of the youth. And the strength of the youth are the weaknesses the of the elders. elders. So the youth are very much more about so, X's and O's, measurable gain. Where's but the they're also spot? more selfish okay. and they're also more multicultural. But where's the sweet spot in that? I think the sweet spot is spot. with us. Okay. Okay. Mm. 
You're talking about our generation. Our generation, yeah. yeah. With the right. sweet spot. In between. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But the problem with our generation, we suffer from both sides. Yeah. yeah. We got the materialism, the multiculturalism, yeah. you hear and the it religious from feel good and the grandparents. Yeah. Exactly. And not to go back to the Dion situation, but <laughs> to see that many black yeah. men say he did nothing wrong and it wasn't his job to transform the HBCU into a paragon of athletics so that the HBCU could benefit from all the money that PWIs benefit from. That hurt me. Very few black men saw the irresponsibility in what Deion Sanders did, which tells me most black men have no problem at all doing nothing, nothing to improve the greater good of the black society. And that's a shame because part of being a man, the masculine principle is about building and protecting. And you have so many, even with our women, you hear black men say, listen, I don't date black women. I don't want to black women. Then that means you have no loyalty to the black community. And I'm seeing yeah. more and more black men have less and less loyalty to the black community irrespective of whatever form that takes, Ooh, whether gotcha. it's marrying a black woman, whether right. it's helping build a black system, as in the mm -hmm. case of Deion Sanders, a lot of black men could care less. Do you think there's a plan to like strip black masculinity? Oh, absolutely. I mm. think you see it even uh, lately with what happened with Jonathan Majors, mm -hmm. okay. with the Snow Bunny situation. Yeah. And these black celebrities still running around with these white girls is just insane to me. You know, but he was in a cab, allegedly... He put hands on the girl. She went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. They said there was almost no marks on her body. Now, Jonathan Majors is a big, strong brother. Yeah. If he choked you out you and you're him. white, pale, y'all right. turn blue. They turn every color under the rainbow when they get touched. Right. And yeah. you mean to tell me that there's no scars, no signs of this? He didn't do nothing to you, really. Right. You understand me? So she had him locked up. She played then she recanted the story. Three yeah. times. You know, now, I don't know if he was completely innocent, and he may have been. Okay, because she could have simply done this as an act of white power, as yeah. white women do, yeah. to show him right. that even though you might be the fastest rising star in Hollywood right now, I am a privileged white woman now. and I can destroy you yeah. overnight. I don't think she intended it to go that far. Yeah. Because really? I, I think the reason she recanted her story is because she knows that if he loses, she, she loses. loses. Right. Yeah, but, but the problem is the damage is done now. Yeah. Right. The U.S. Army has already uh, pulled... His line of ad campaigns yeah. on the recruit. He lost wow. that. He'll probably never be in another Marvel movie again. Oh, no. He's the rest really of his done. life. No, no, no. They was protecting because, uh, him. They I were feel protecting like him. It's one of those. The they Marvel were. was? Oh, yeah. They were protecting him. Okay. Yeah, they, okay. they were like, he was totally innocent. I'm sorry. I didn't no, mean no, no. Go, no, go okay. ahead. Because um, they ahead. normally, uh, they quick to drop you. They you. are, but they, in this case... They were on his side. Okay. Yeah, they were. Well, probably because that movie out right now. That don't mean he's going to be casted <laughs> yeah. anymore. Right. You know, oh, they need no. that like one of those, gonna get over you, know, you don't think it's one of those Hollywood rituals, you know what I'm saying? Like to, you know, the black man, you know, like the <laughs> casting couch and all that yeah. type of situation because that before guys the, be talking about. Like, uh, yeah, you know, we saw the, the photo shoots, you know, right, when everybody right. was up in arms about the yeah. photo shoot with him being Yeah, I didn't feminine. appreciate those. Yeah, yeah I didn't so, appreciate those either. Yeah. It was, it's a lot of things tied But like to the me. embarrassment ritual, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, you you're like a regular black dude out here, man. You're not, you know what I'm saying? Like, they could have been. It could have been, but I think it was definitely an attack on black masculinity. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to compare it to something to show you that. You've had white men who were guilty of spousal abuse. Oh, yeah. Right. You had a white NFL player who beat his black girlfriend almost half to death. Mm. Uh, you regularly see rich white men get arrested for beating up their women and girlfriends and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Majors got more press off of an allegation yep. in 24 right. hours mm -hmm. than they got off of substantiated abuse. I'll give you another parallel. What just happened yesterday? Unfortunately, there was a murder, a shooting, Nashville Christian yes. mm -hmm. Private Academy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. white now, we found out that it was a white woman, transgender, a transgender. white transgender. But guess what? That wasn't brought out right away. Oh, nope. no. They only brought it out once they found, once they knew that they could no longer hold it. Mm -hmm. Right. When black people commit crime, they put you out there from the beginning. Oh, Even yeah. children, from they'll the name jump. who they are. You understand right. me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I look at this, what I'm saying is Jonathan Majors got more press in one day. Mm -hmm. In his first 24 hours of this incident, mm -hmm. with almost no evidence he was guilty of, got more press 
Then a school shooting mm-hmm. that left three children sure and three did. staff goes members back dead. To it. So that clearly shows that the American media has a voracious appetite of destroying masculine black males. And the they black do community. not like masculine black males. I don't think this was a Hollywood ritual, but I'm not going to rule it out mm-hmm. because I can see the need for the white power structure to disgrace his image right. somewhat mm-hmm. to perpetuate their narrative of toxic masculinity right. and what's interesting about the toxic masculinity concept is how can masculinity be toxic but transgenderism not be right mm. now uh segue into another situation you uh all right the work that you do all right we saw a couple of weeks back that somebody busted one of the windows out of the school yes right do you so think, we boarded them back up do you think with the work you do you think that people uh feel when you're on that you're a scam for money, you're scamming uh, for money. I think that my detractors. I, I don't believe there's anybody who's think I'm a scam. Okay. Let me let me take that back. I don't think there's anyone who knows me who has ever been in a room with me who thinks I'm a scam. Gotcha. You follow me? Gotcha. I believe that there's people who have not met me mm. who listen to the negativity of the detractors mm. who may think there's some truth to that. Right. 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 You, you understand me? No, so I if you're you. a second yeah. or third party, right. mm. you might because you have no frame of reference. Gotcha. But if you've been around me, you know better. Right. And when we talk about the whole scam narrative that we've been dealing with basically the entire fundraiser nine years now, it's been put out by jealous persons. Uh, nearly everybody who has led mm. the We Gotta Stop Dr. Umar movement, right. nearly everyone had a legitimate reason to try to stop my work. Yeah. One guy was like a life coach, but he wasn't successful. He wanted to be a public speaker. He wasn't mm. successful. Mm-hmm. If you look at his website and take his name off and put mine on there, you would think it's Dr. Umar. Mm. And, he's yeah. one, and he's one of the leaders Right. So it was clear to me the reason you're jealous is you actually wanted to be me. Yeah. Mm. You understand? Mm. If I go to the conscious community, a lot of them guys, they wanted to be me. You understand the popularity, mm. the success, the education, the credentials, the oratorical skill, the DNA. Mm. You understand? The most traveled scholar of the century. If you look at what I've done, there's nobody alive who has the resume. I'm talking conscious or mainstream. Nobody has the resume. And very few ancestors even have the resume. Mm. There's never been a scholar of my stature with my credentials to have the mainstream following of a regular black celebrity. All right. I have the following of a black celebrity. My interviews get more views than people, you understand, who are worth billions of dollars and have sold hundreds of millions of albums. I'm right there when it comes to followership. If you put me in a room with the top 10 black celebrities in the country, don't be surprised if more people come over to me than go over to them. <laughs> so why do you think people... And I've done it without any white platform, any white support. I've never been on Oprah's couch, <laughs> and I'm just as big as anybody who's been on Oprah's couch. Okay, gotcha. So why do you think people, even black people, choose to cast doubt on a black man that's trying to do something positive? Or the community. Well, number one, for some black women who suffer from reactionary feminists, mm-hmm. they don't like to see black men succeed, period, because they see the black man as the enemy. Mm. Feminism has conditioned a lot of black women, not all, not most, but many, to see the black man as the enemy. He must be stopped at all costs. And I also think I get some of the vicarious trauma of black women yeah, who look at me. And see the husband who left them. Yeah. See the it's baby daddy who left them. Yeah. See the, the the boyfriend who abused them. You understand me? Yeah. So since I'm out there and I'm prominent and psychology is my platform, I think they transfer onto me a lot of the traumatic feelings they've had for significant others in their life. I get a lot of that. You understand? For the black men, it's just pure jealousy. Pure yeah. un- de- jealousy. And the issue with brothers is that ego. You understand? Yeah. And we got to go back to the plantation. Because one of the things that the plantation bred into African people's collective consciousness Mm -hmm. is this belief that only one of you can succeed at a time. See, on the plantation, the man, your mission laws, you let one slave go a year. Only one. So the slaves started working against each other because they knew only one or two or three, but never all. So the white man was very clever and crafty in making sure that any benefits we gave to the enslaved African could only be enjoyed by a select few. This automatically make you a competitor Mm -hmm. with the people you should be collaborating with. So when people see me doing what I do because of the slave mentality, 
They say if Dr. Umar is winning, nobody else can. Right. That's totally wrong. Yeah. All of us can win, and we can win at the same time if we just work together. The jealousy in the black community is largely due to this idea that the white man gave us is part of our post-traumatic slavery disease that only one black person can win at a time. So if they see Tyler Perry with his own studio, no other black person can do it because Tyler did it. That's not true. There could be a million more black studios. Yeah. You see a black person with a new restaurant in Jackson, right? Right. Mm -hmm. People hate. Why? Because they, they did it first, so nobody else nobody can do else it. Can right. But there's a hundred white restaurants. There's a hundred white movie studios. There you go. There's a dozen right. white airlines. Mm -hmm. Why is it with every other group there could be multiple people succeeding mm -hmm. in the same sphere of life. But with black people, we've been conditioned to believe that only one can make it. And the one who's making it is the reason you can't. That's what they taught us oh, to believe. So that you, is the basis of Negro jealousy. When do you think the disconnect came? Because it wasn't like that in the 40s, 50s, 60s. Black people were sticking together. Integration destroyed us. Now, let me say this. I'm sick and tired of people blaming Dr. King for integration. No, yeah. no. First of all, the military integrated before Dr. King's movement ever took mm. place. Mm -hmm. Public school integrated before Dr. King's movement ever took place. The only thing Dr. King integrated in his lifetime was public accommodations, mm. restaurants, yep. Greyhound, buses, uh, 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 buses mm -hmm. hotels. That's it. Right. All other integration came before King. And after his death, black people got integrated because we wanted to be accepted by white people. Dr. King had nothing to do with it. What's stopping us right now in Mississippi? What's stopping us from buying 300 acres somewhere in Mississippi, right. leaving white society completely and building our own reality? What's stopping us in Pennsylvania from pulling out of Pittsburgh, pulling out of Philly, pulling out of Harrisburg? Yeah. Fear right. and love of white people. Yeah. Black people do not want to admit we have a deep-seated psychopathological need mm -hmm. for white proximity because we need white validation. And this we is, don't this feel right the thing without I, white people the around thing us. thing that I asked Validated. you the last time, I said, is there a cure? From the way you're talking, it doesn't even seem like there's there is a cure. A cure if you, you raise know. the children in the right mindset. Right. There's an African proverb that says... Every time you see a new baby born, that's a message from God. He's not giving up yet. Mm. The problem with us is we socialize the children mm. the same way we were socialized. Mm. So how is there going to be a different mindset when we're not deliberately controlling the educational and socialization process of black children? Right. We are letting Negroes be born mm -hmm. while we claim to be against Negroism. Right. Change the way you raise the children or we will stay this way forever. Look at what Mao Zedong did in China. It only took him a generation. In 20 years, he took the Chinese from being almost nothing in the eyes of the world mm -hmm. to now being the economic superpower of the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Mao Zedong mm -hmm. said, listen, we're not going to compete with America, France, Belgium, Germany. We're not going to compete with England. Mm -hmm. We're going to send our children all across the world, mm -hmm. and y'all going to study and master what everybody doing. We're not going to compete. We just going to make the cheaper knockoff version of everything. Right. And by doing that, China is now the Walmart and the dollar store of the planet Earth. They Here's are. the brilliance of Miles Zedong. He said, listen, the white man runs off capitalism. Right. Overcharging, you understand? Overcharging for the product, but underpaying for its production. Right. Air Jordans cost $5.00. But we sell them for 225. Okay. That's capitalism. Chinese man said, wait a minute. Two-thirds of the world lives on less than a dollar a day. So if two-thirds of the world lives on less than a dollar a day, the white man's capitalism can never rule the earth unless he does so by force, mm -hmm. which gotcha. is what he did. Gotcha. So the Chinese said, but we're going to do, we're going to cater to the poor. And so now when you go to Africa, when you go to Asia, mm -hmm. when you go to Central and South America, the Caribbean, you see Chinese imports, yeah. Chinese imports, because Chinese. they are catering to the people who live on less than a dollar a day. And so here's the question that the white man has. This is his problem. The American government's problem, France's problem, England's problem. How do you take the world off of the Chinese man's breast and umbilical cord where you're not willing to sell merchandise as cheaply as the Chinese do? The Chinese has basically made their economy almost, uh, what's the word when you say when you can't get rid of it? 
It's 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 and uh, it's un it's unalienable. It's undestructible. Right. You understand me? Yeah, because yeah, no matter how you. much yeah. you say America it's can infinite. do this, for it's infinite. It's exactly. Infinite. Word. No matter yeah. how much you yeah. say America can do this for you, I can buy almost anything that comes in off the Chinese boat. The quality won't be good. Mm -hmm. The food might actually cause cancer. We know the quality not good. Right. You understand me? They Ooh. told me in Jamaica that the Chinese come and lay their streets and roads down. And then they say within a year, they're rolling up like a fruit roll up. Ooh. So we know the Chinese don't do quality, but they do make the products affordable. And what, that's why America can't do nothing with China. What's your, uh, uh, your opinion on crack era versus Indispensable was the word. Indispensable. Indispensable. Okay. What's your uh, opinion on the uh, crack versus opioid era? Well, the thing with that is when they demonized and criminalized crack back in the 80s, mm -hmm. they decided to treat black addicts as criminals. Right. It was a criminal justice approach, not a mental health approach. With these white opioid addicts, it is the exact opposite. Oh, it's mental. They are treated as a mental health mm -hmm. crisis. Open air opioid use. You ain't never seen no open air crack use. You understand? <laughs> That's the whole purpose of the crack house. Right. You had to hide it. You had to get off yeah. the street and smoke. Yeah. The opioids, they don't need an opioid house. Mm -hmm. They can do it right out on the street. Yep. And mm. the government will even give them clean supplies and everything and so mm. forth and health care and everything else. So that clearly shows you that what is done to black people is done on purpose because they want to get rid of us. We got to understand something. We've had four great periods in our existence in America under British North American rule. First, we had to fight for our humanity. Okay, that's one. Then we had to fight for liberty, freedom. Then we had to fight for equality. Still fighting. Now we in a fight for survival. Oh, yeah. In many ways, you could consider this fight the most dangerous of them all because never before were they interested in getting rid of you. They just needed to control you because mm -hmm. they needed you. Right. But now they got so many non-blacks, so many Mexicans and Afghans and Ukrainians. Black people are no longer necessary in order for the American empire to thrive. But and that's think, dangerous. Do you because think what do we know of every conqueror, every dictator, whenever they have a people that they no longer need, they come up with a campaign of extermination, which we are already under, yeah. right. but it's going to intensify in the next decade. Now, I noticed after George Floyd, the incident and everything, all the beatings and the killings that the black people have had. Now, after that, it became the Chinese people are getting beat on the streets. Ah. Yeah. The, yeah, you know, yeah, the Chinese yeah. the Chinese are getting beat on the street. We uh -huh. need to pass this bill. Anti-Asian hate. Yeah, we need yeah. to pass this bill. Mm -hmm. You know, and how is it so easy for them to get bills passed, you know, to protect them? Because they are not a threat. But not us. They are not a threat. Mm -hmm. First of all, white people are losing their numbers. 50% mm -hmm. of the United States are reporting a higher death rate for Caucasians than birth rate. Mm -hmm. That's why their numbers are shrinking. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. They're genetically recessive. They're going to have those problems. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why Thomas Jefferson and George Washington had so many babies with their black African <laughs> female slaves because Martha Washington and, and the Jefferson wife, they couldn't keep them babies. They kept losing them. They kept miscarriaging because the white womb is an artificial womb. It is not the African womb. It is not the original woman. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why black women in America have the highest infant mortality rate in the modern world. How do you explain women been having uh, babies longer than any other woman? And, and we have the highest infant mortality rate yep. in the most industrialized nation. Right. That don't make sense. They're killing They're our killing babies them. on purpose mm -hmm. to try to keep black numbers down. Mm -hmm. So anyway, with that decline of white birth, America has to automatically baptize or should I say uh, put another group through initiation that they want to make probationary whites. Yeah. I believe Making that they the have chosen <laughs> clandestinely to make the Chinese and the other Asians the probationary whites okay. because they hate black people just as much. Mm -hmm. They're just as conservative and they're just as wealthy. Mexicans are going to be very upset because for a long time they I thought, thought they dead. were going to be the replacement. I thought that it was going to be And dead. they were. Yeah, yeah. But then what happened was white people, for whatever reason, 
they dislike Mexicans a lot more than Asians. Because mm. they work harder and they group together. Yeah, you they see. Stick together. So the Mexicans were swapped out for the Asians. You understand me? Yeah. And plus, the Asians are a small enough group that America can control them fairly well. You see. Right. So the reason the anti-Asian hate thing popped off the way that it did is to take attention away from mm -hmm. the police brutality mm -hmm. and the white racist murders of black people. Whenever we have a major issue, the first thing you will see the government and the media do mm -hmm. is undercut what is being done to black people mm -hmm. by shining a spotlight on what is being done to other people. Now, the Asian parlor murders in America, mm -hmm. they were bad. They were unfortunate. Mm -hmm. It's a shame those women lost their life. Yeah. I can say that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But here's the problem I got. That was one tragedy. Yeah. One. They got an executive order and federal legislation almost overnight. Yeah. For one tragedy. Black people have had thousands of yeah. tragedies, and the George Floyd bill still hasn't been passed. Yeah, and the passed. Emmett Till bill is so weak as butter that the Emmett Till uh, anti-lynching bill ain't even strong enough to get the white woman who got Emmett Till murdered arrested. arrested. Right. How dare you name this in my honor? Mm. And the bill so weak that a bill you named after me can't even be used to lock up Carolyn Bryant, yep. the white woman responsible for my murder. That old snow bunny is still living her best life. <laughs> she living her best life. Yep. When people are protesting With an Emmett Till anti-lynching yeah. bill that can't be used to lock her up. Mm -hmm. So that shows you how much power that has. Wow. I'm also seeing, I'm sorry, no, no, I'm also seeing, you know, here lately, you know, stop Jewish hate. Oh yeah, and another that, one. That baffled me. I was well, like, let, what let, are you let, saying? Well, let us also understand about... Uh, the political games that Caucasians play. Yeah. And European Jews are Caucasians. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't care how much they try to turn themselves into another race. You are Caucasian. Yeah. Right. Let's do a DNA test. Y'all Caucasian. Right. Yeah. The perpetrator has to always reinvent himself as a victim. So he never has to be accountable mm -hmm. for his crimes against other groups. I'll give you an example similar to what you're talking about, the European Jew. Yeah. Who is responsible for so much dysfunction in the black community. I mean, you are the publishers, promoters, producers of gangster rap. Yep. Yeah. Need I say more? You control Hollywood. Yeah. Need I say more? Right. The media that mm -hmm. regularly puts out negative, destructive images of black people. Most media houses, the largest ones, there is a Jewish yep. CEO or major stakeholder. That's not anti-Semitism. That is the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. Anybody yep. can look it up. Mm -hmm. But they're never held accountable. And the minute you try to hold them accountable, you'll be accused of being an anti-Semite. Anti That's how they control the conversation so it never comes around to holding them responsible. They participated in our slavery. Mm -hmm. They were the largest insurers of the slave ships and the Africans themselves mm -hmm. who made the Middle Passage. Never been held accountable, nor are they included in any of the reparations conversations, which I find very interesting. How can you leave out European Jews from any conversation on reparations for slavery mm -hmm. when they had such a big hand in it? The Secretary of War for the Confederacy was a slave-owning European Jew. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So how are you going to leave them out of the conversation i saw an article about a week or two ago a white woman wrote an article on karen the concept of the white I, karen I, I read which is today. basically yeah. a newsy ass white woman who don't want to mind her business <laughs> and always worrying about what's going on with other black folks right right she said karen karen for the white woman is like the n-word for black people this is what she wrote I've karen <laughs> for the white woman is the n-word for black people Really? But shouldn't they be offended, though? Why? No. What is offensive about the word Karen? That's a name. Right. And, and you got I, white women and, named Karen. When so I say is that offended, offensive? When I say offended, I mean, shouldn't they be conscious of the shit that they do? Oh, absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So when you put a stigma on them, uh -huh. it should give them some conscience. I agree. I agree. Of the dumb shit that they do every now I and again. I agree. Yeah. But remember, yeah. the perpetrator has to be rebranded as a victim. So go. what we're going to do is we're going to say it to call me Karen mm -hmm. is to call me the N-word. So I'm going to force you to stop using the word Karen because if you use it, I'm going to turn you into a sexist against white women. Mm. It's just like the black people who don't agree with transgenderism, the whole situation with Dwayne Wade's child. Mm -hmm. I completely disagree with that. That is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. He's not old enough to buy a gun. He's not old enough to vote. Right. You understand? He ain't old enough to drink. 
but he's old enough to decide he want to spend the rest of his life as a woman. And if yes. you say, I don't think that's right, I'm not wishing no harm or no hurt. It's a child. Yeah. I don't think that's right. But they will rebrand you yeah. as a, what's the word when you're anti-LGBT? Um, you are a... Transphobia? Transphobic. Transphobic. They will yeah, yeah, brand yeah, yeah. you as transphobic mm -hmm. if you say that this child has no business making this decision as a child. Right. You understand me? Which is so nice. basically, any black person with an opinion mm -hmm. against the various campaigns that the white power structure is carrying out to destroy us as a people mm -hmm. will be castigated and branded as a hater. You so, understand so me? So we can't and basically say, a domestic terrorist is what they will make you we into. We can't say Jews or LGBTQ, and then once you do that, it's oh. an offensive and situation. Yes, this, this is the thing yes. for me. Those are the yeah. two most protected groups yeah. in, in the country. Last time I heard, uh, well, last time I know, uh, Jew Judaism is a religion. It is. So how were they able to seem like a whole race? Because they colonized it. Mm. It's yeah. just like when a white man came to America, took the country, he called himself an American. Right. Well, you came from Europe. Right. But I colonized it. Okay. Just like they colonized Christianity. Gotcha. Right. Just like they colonized black music. Okay. You understand? Right. Right. We allow, it's so easy to take over anything black because we want to be accepted by everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. There you go. And, and, and that right there is the central thesis mm -hmm. of why black people cannot evolve because we're still looking for acceptance from other groups. Right. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about whether we accept them. But we want their approval and their validation. That's why we can't get nothing done. Mm. Do you think we're that like children still stuck in toddlerism uh -huh. where we still need our mother and father to cold cuddle us and hold us? You can look at slavery as yeah. a process of arrested development that stopped the black man and woman from fully evolving into adult thinking men and women. Even now, we solve our problems using emotion. That's childlike. We spend our money on the things back we want it. and we back beg to, the government for the things we need. That's childlike. So it's back to We are very on infantile. We are very infantile like, yeah. when it comes. Look, look at us. We own almost nothing with a $2 trillion budget. We have a $2 trillion dollar budget last time. and yeah. don't own no institutions, not a single black Wall Street in the country. Do you think some of the things, that, like going back to the Karen situation, do mm. you think that they want to ban that term because... For me, it's just they be mad because they can't say nigga. Well, actually, they do say it. At well, least the public I, school teachers, they say it all the time and never get fired. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just in a Terre Haute, Indiana, speaking last Thursday for the first time. And they had a situation there where I believe the uh, football coach used the N-word, allegedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the principal knew about it and didn't do nothing about it. Mm. And guess what their punishment was? What? For using the N-word in front of students. Three-day suspension without pay. Mm. Not even a week. Wow. Now, let's flip that over. Let's say a black coach mm -hmm. called a European Jew or an LGBT student a derogatory term. Yeah. His ass would have been fired. fired. Yeah. But because you only offended black people, three days without pay. But I blame us for that. Because one thing we don't do that we used to do in the age of Dr. King, we were known as a people for showing up and showing out. Yeah, we, were. we don't do that no more. We don't do that. Back then, you do something against a black person, you got 20,000 blacks. And when you lock them up, another wave is coming. You couldn't mm -hmm. stop it. So the government said, listen, we just got to change the rules because they are disrupting society right. with their aggressive protesting. Mm -hmm. See, we will protest in a peaceful way. It doesn't change now. Uh-uh. They showing walk. up to stop that business from conducting any more business until mm -hmm. you address this situation. Black people got to start doing that again. You're not going to change this with voting and, and legislation. It has well, to be black people power and it needs to be uncompromising, unapologetically black people power. But what do you say to the people? We got who, to show people think, we're not afraid. Who think voting, you know, you, you got the elders mm -hmm. who think voting is the way. That's because you see what I'm saying yeah. you're talking about a generation who never thought they would get the right to yeah. vote. And during whose time voting was one of the best ways to achieve political economic mm. equality mm. it's not no more mm. because every time you get something that should be the solution the white man moves the goalposts yep. mm -hmm. so now since negroes have the right to vote voting will no longer matter the way it used to right you understand so now all we're going to do is finance the campaign so whoever win 
we going to own them anyway. Own them anyway. So it don't matter if the black people vote because they don't own the candidates. We own the candidates. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem that we got. Yeah. Voting means nothing unless you own that candidate. We don't choose them. We let the white power structure choose them, and then we go and vote for them. Well, if the government chose Barack Obama, if the Democratic Party chose Obama, if they chose Biden, if they chose Kamala, that means they own them. Whether you vote for them or not, they're never going to be loyal to you. We have to start financing our liberation. We're the only people who do not use our money to finance our liberation. That's real. You can't name one campaign in black America right now where we are using our own money to improve our reality. You can't name one. Well, I, I, I you know, I, I disagree. I, I, I see Dame Dash doing things. Like what? He, Be specific he, with me. Yeah, you know, I see him doing his own sneaker line. His, that's he's not, got, that's well, not, well, that's not, okay. that, that has well, nothing to well, do with well, political, but, economic but, liberation. But, but, but you said not doing their own thing. No, 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 but no, 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 he no, no, is no. Not, Let me clarify. Yeah. Not doing okay. anything okay. relevant. Okay. Selling okay. sneakers is not well, relevant. Well, he, he does have a film production company. I'm not, so I'm not knocking him. Is that not relevant? Making his, no, it's not. Okay. Let me give you what's relevant. Miseducation, mass incarceration, gentrification, mm. police brutality and genocide, and access to wealth. Tyler Perry Studio and Dame Jazz Studio is not affecting any of those major problems. Now let's look at the institutions that we need. It's the exact opposite. Schools, banks, hospitals, supermarkets, manufacturing, and distribution. But I, I, I do think that Dame does have a school. I think Dame has a school. Well, I don't want to make school. this specific about okay, Dame well, Dash well, I'm not, I and I'm not, And I'm not right. trying so to. So we're just saying. But you got people like that uh-huh. uh, that are trying to do some things, you know, with some of the But I want they, you to give me somebody, obtained. because this is like the okay. conversation me and Charlemagne had on the Breakfast Club. All right. He couldn't answer it, and I want you to see if you can answer it, and you won't be able to because there is no answer. Okay. Name me the black celebrity attacking one of the major five uh, problems I mentioned or building one of the main five institutions I just mentioned. That's the stuff that matter. You got me. Not sneakers and movies. Okay. Right. You follow what I'm saying? I got you. So, Dr. Omar, have you heard the story uh, about a Mississippi man by the name of Rasheem Carter? Is that the brother who was uh, beheaded? No. Well, actually, his body was found back in November. Okay. And um, they didn't know really what was wrong, but he had called his mom and told him that a bunch of white men were following Yes, yes. Him. Yeah, for a couple of days, and yeah. he had to walk, and then they finally found him. Mm-hmm. Is he the one who was beheaded, though? He, I don't know if he was beheaded, Somebody was but beheaded. he was Well, dead. yeah, they, they describe they it beheaded. as a beheading, but when you look at the uh, the skeletal remains, it looked like they sawed a perfect like oh, man. top part of his they head. They scalped him. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. scalped him yeah. or something like Woo. that. And you and have to have some type of... Um, some type of instrument or something to do it because it wasn't, it didn't seem like a, it seemed like something that was in a lab. Yeah. Like they took his body to a lab. They sawed his head, the top part of his head off, just looking at the Ooh. skeletal remains now. And yeah. the Smith County Sheriff's Department said there was no foul play involved. Is this Mississippi? Yes, this yeah. is now, Mississippi. Now, Smith County, how far from where we at? Uh, about 30 miles, 35. Uh, yeah, 45 not that far. minutes. No, yeah. it's not that far. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. That is sad. Yeah. That is sad. So sad. what's the state of the investigation right now? Um, well, they're still investigating. Yeah, I think it's still under investigation. But the so. the the uh, the coroner and all that they ru- they ruled it out as they couldn't find out exactly what happened. You yeah. know, like you know, because the speculation said that his body was thrown. They, they got a skull right there. He's showing you to your left. Uh, mm. Like the body was. Um, yeah, they got like the skeletal remains. Done. Yeah, like, that's what it's left with like. some man for working. And he was working with these guys, you know? Yeah. He was like, he had literally went to work and then disappeared. I have a deeper suspicion. Right. Looking at how professionally done that was, Yes. I would like to know a little bit more about his medical history mm. mm-hmm. to make sure this was not some sort of organ trafficking. Right. Or some sort of a bioweapons research. Yeah. I wonder if he was unique in any way. Mm. You understand me? Mm. Kind of along the line of Henrietta Lacks. Yeah. Wow. But why did they have to be so careful with how they took his top off? Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 This story is it's not getting a whole lot of media attention. Mm. You know, and that's what they talk about it every once in a while, you know, but it, the media attention that it should be getting, it's not getting at all. Getting wow. it. And it, I really, it's because it's a black man, of course, but. That town, is that like a mostly black town? No. Mm-hmm. No. 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 It's, it's, it's very small. Mississippi yeah. is small. Very and it's small. Yeah. But it's major- that 
particular because it was Taylorsville. Right? Yeah. yeah. Taylorsville is very small and it's majority white. Yeah. But outside, because you got Laurel. Okay. Laurel is majority yeah. black. Yeah. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Outside. Okay. So, but Smith I know he went does to the have police. a history of being racist. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Because yeah. I know he went to the police and he asked the police to give him a, a ride. Uh, to the it. hotel or nope. something like that. They wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. They told him he had to go. He couldn't hang around. Right. I think they was in on it. I think that might be deeper than just a hate crime. It's definitely a hate crime. It's mm-hmm. a hate crime. But I think there's something medical with that situation. Yeah, Organ on, based or something. The way that that was, that was professional. That was yeah. professional. Right. Ain't no drunk ass white boys on the side of the street doing so that. Well, doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. He was saying that he was having discrepancy with his boss yeah. at the job because he was working one of those welder jobs. He was actually from Fayette, yeah. okay. Fayette, Mississippi, which is way far as far. So he came into town just for work yes. as a welder job uh, for. Um, What's the name of the company? Uh, I don't know the name of the but company. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, but, yeah. yeah, it's a major company for construction, different things of that, yeah. that nature. And he said he had problems with his boss. And then uh, he was also saying the people that was following him, they might have been people from his job. Yeah. You know I believe it. Yeah. I you believe know? it. But I'm still not clear on the way they saw this skull, though. Nobody yeah, right. is. Something, Nobody something, is. somebody wanted a black brain or something. Mm-hmm. something. Pineal <laughs> gland, I'm not, right. eyes, I'm, I, I'm not sold on that. Mm, right. Yeah. Because what I do know, when it comes to the organ harvesting market, it's a very lucrative one. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. You understand me? Everybody part is involved. So even in the research of it, if it's not just an outright, you know, um, transplant. Right. And I just think it's a little bit more to this story. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, and also, there's another story, you know, where two young black men were, um, they were at home, and the Rankin County Police Department busted them, say on a drug raid. Um, one of them ended up getting a gun pulled on him, shot in the head. The, the officers put a gun in his mouth. All these things. That's Mississippi, too? This is Brandon. <laughs> this is Rankin County. When did that happen? Uh, the, the end of last year? Uh, yeah, something like okay. that. Yeah. yeah. And so now they're saying that there was no video footage, which there was supposed to be body cam footage. They're saying there's no body cam footage, but, you know, they don't know really what happened. So I'm wondering how they're going to fig- figure this out. As far as the black man, it's going to be their word against the officers yeah. mm-hmm. at the yes. end of the day. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, I'm going to say this, and I say it very responsibly, too. If you look at our history, from the Deacons to Defense, which operated down here, you know, to the Panthers, the Garvey uh, Legion, every time we had issues with racism, brutal, aggressive, violent racism, we had to face it toe-to-toe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I believe the only way this stops, we will have to go to war with it. Mm-hmm. You follow me? That's the police and everything. <laughs> it's, this does not stop. It only gets worse it's, it's until gets worse. black men decide we have had enough. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the future right now. Right. The only way this backs off, there's going to have to be a clash of the groups, police versus black America, white America versus black America, there has to be mass casualty on both sides. We talk about that. All if it's yeah. mass casualty on black side, <laughs> nothing changes. Mm, right. It has to be mass casualty on both sides. Yeah. I wish it wasn't this way, but history so shows us. you think us. There, there needs to be bloodshed too? It's going to have to Can you show me how the situation? Have you ever seen a situation in human history where one group is being violently oppressed by another, where they were able to at least repel some of that violence without? enacting some of their own. Hmm. Hmm. You follow me? You can't say that it's never happened. Yeah, the whole purpose of war is to stop you from exploiting me. That's the yeah, whole purpose will. of war. Hmm. So if you can solve this without war, why have we had wars? Why hmm. do we still have wars? Hmm. Because there's always a group who wants to do something to another group selfishly right. who isn't interested in hearing petitions about how this is just wrong. Mm-hmm. You follow me? You have to put hands on people. Yeah. To teach them how to respect you. Black people haven't done that in quite a long time. Long Not time. since the Panthers. The Panthers were the last group systemically to put hands on white people for mistreating black people. Mm. That's deep. Now, uh, let everybody know where you're going to be at once again today, sir. Yes, indeed. It's going down today. Shout out to Black Mississippi. The Prince of Pan-Africanism is back. Please join me at the state legislature outside today. From 2 o'clock until 5 it's o'clock, March and Raleigh, free to land, free to water, right here in Jackson, Mississippi. We will be organizing at 429 Mississippi Street. That is 429 Mississippi Street today. 
2 o'clock until 5 o'clock, free to land, free to water. And this evening, from 6 p.m. until 8, we will be at the African Art Gallery. Come get you some cultural clothing. Come get you some jewelry. Some, come get you some books. Come get you some knowledge. But we will be there fellowshipping, networking, talking, conversating, most of all strategizing and planning mm -hmm. in the African Art Gallery from 6 to 8. And that is 800 Farish Street, F-A-R-I-S-H. And if you want the flyer, you can text Dr. Umar at 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. And let me also remind everybody that next weekend, excuse me, this weekend. This weekend. So yeah. I'll go home tomorrow and I'll be right back this weekend. Memphis, Tennessee. We have the Black Fathers March Gala. Six o'clock is open to men, women, elders, everybody. That's six o'clock tomorrow. Excuse me. Six o'clock Sunday. April the 2nd in Memphis, Tennessee, the gala. I will be there. I will be speaking. And then the next day, which is the main event, April the 3rd, the 55th anniversary of Dr. King's last speech. Uh, I've been to the mountaintop speech and Dr. Umar has been chosen to honor Dr. King and that moment in our That's history. Awesome. And that will be at the Robert Church Park, Bill Street, Robert Church Park on Bill Street, 4 p.m. And that is on Monday April the 3rd. Okay. All right, man. Words of encouragement. Uh, throw out that social so everybody can follow you once again. Yes, indeed. And don't forget, hit the cash app for the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Just to give everybody a quick update, when I get back home tomorrow, yeah. Thursday, I have to go to the school. The HVAC company has one piece they need to install. Once they install that one piece, we should be good with the HVAC, mm. get it inspected. And at that time, I'm looking for the city to give us our certificate of occupancy. Okay, let's we still go. got to beautify yeah. the school, you know, cover up the holes that the plumbers and the electricians had to go through, yeah. right. clean the floor, paint. Mm -hmm. But it's all beautification at that point. Yeah. Right. We done with the repairs Thursday. Okay, You know what I mean? So we're about to cross the finish it's line. It's taking you nine years to do this. Are you excited and ready to open? Yes, indeed. Yeah. We're not going to open until next year, though. We'll next be opening year. for the community this year. Okay. Community programming, but actual education for the children. And what kind of programming? Uh, we're going to be doing everything. Okay. We want to do the Black Women's Conference, Black Men's Conference, Ex Offender Conference, Black Youth Conference, uh, Black Wall Street Conference, Farmers Conference, Cosmetics Conference, Comic Book, everything. I love uh, it. Uh, conscious Black Singles. Ooh, we're going to have right. a conference for single Black conscious people mm -hmm. oh, looking yeah. for a mate. You understand, uh, it's going to be powerful, man. Because gotcha, man. We're educating the kids by day, but then we want to make sure we serve the community by night. Throw that social out one more time. Indeed, y'all. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Dr. Umar Johnson, on Instagram and Twitter, on Facebook. I use my Yoruba last name, Ifa Tunde, so it's Dr. Umar Ifa Tunde on Facebook. And TikTok is Prince of Pan-Africanism, and we spell Africa with a K. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Definitely, man. You're on the Urban City Podcast Network, Dr. Umar Johnson, Ifatunde. Dr. U Umar Ifatunde. Yes, sir. George Bo, Bottle Papa, DJ Fingerprint, man. We That's are right. the 748 Podcast. Y'all yeah. keep it locked and continue to follow and like that YouTube page, Urban City Podcast. Follow, like, subscribe, get all our notifications. We're going to get back at y'all. All right. Urban City Podcast.